Kia ora. Welcome back to Sloan Ranger Studio. Today we've got Gotrek back on the table for part three in my How to Paint Gotrek series. We're going to be doing his leather boots and his leather belt today. So we're going to be showing how we can do a bit of a warm, worn leather look. Um, it's actually going to be a really quick video. It's not too many steps at all and it's going to look really awesome. Let's get into it. All right, so here's Gotrek. How we left him after the last episode with his lovely new stripy pants. First thing we're going to be doing for this leather is base coating it in a nice warm brown. And so, of course, the best for that is Mornfang Brown when it comes to the Citadel range. So, so I'm going to be base coating his boots and his belt in this Mornfang Brown. So, let's just go around and base coat this in this nice warm brown being careful around our lovely stripy pants you know everywhere else you can be pretty slapdash but just around these pants let's be careful really don't want to mess that up so just nice thin coat of this brown go around do it twice if you need to and uh, get that leather base coated up on the belt as well being careful around the skin too so yeah go around and get that done Okay, so we've base coated. Oh, let me just zoom in a little bit there. We've base coated in these brown leather areas with that Mourn Fang. So the next thing we're going to do is add in a wash, and we're going to be using Agrax Earthshade for this, of course, our uh, our best friend. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my palette and just uh, you know apply a coat all over, being careful around our pants as per the usual. Uh, you know, just kind of. This is why I put it on the palette so I don't, you know, accidentally put too much on my brush and just drown it. So I'm going to put a coat of this Agrax Earthshade all over the leather. And then what I'm going to do, then I'm going to let that dry and then come back and do it again. Um, just because I really want to create some depth in this leather and a shade is a really, really quick and easy way of getting that, getting that effect. So go around, put this coat of Agrax Earthshade all over, let it dry, come back and do it a second time and we'll uh, we'll come back to see how see how it looks. Alright, so we've got our two very carefully applied coats of Agrax Earthshade nice and dry there. Now that's brought it down quite a lot, so what we want to do is start bringing it back up, but in a you know a bit more controlled manner. So going back to my Mourn Fang, and this is the fun part here, so I'm just gonna be going around and bringing out some of these edges and you know some of these some of these folds that stick out and I'm doing this in a very kind of stipply sort of way so I'm not being too tidy with my edge highlights here and I'm breaking up the line quite often you can see I'm just kind of do -do -do. and of course it helps if you make the sounds and I'm just you know stippling in little scratches little nicks and bringing up the raised areas of this leather here and you know, because we want it to be worn leather, you know, we want there, we want there to be texture. We want it to look like it's you know had a bit of life. It's been lived in. So, you know, and on these raised areas of the boot here, same thing. Just starting to starting to bring it up, and it's starting to look you know very very warm and leathery, and that's exactly what we want. So go around with the Mourn Fang and do that step, just bringing up all these edges and raised areas. Um, edges and areas, I think I said that right, yes, so go around with the Mornfang and do that step. Alright, so we've gone around and brought that leather back up with our Mornfang and you can see that it's starting to look quite warm and rich now, but we've still got that deep shadow in the, in the recesses of the leather, which is what we want. And next thing we're going to do is take it a step up with Scrag Brown over top of those raised areas in the same kind of style that we were doing before with the kind of stipples and scratches and <laughs> someone actually pointed out to me, a friend of mine was saying that Scrag is my most used colour on this channel and it's just so good, it's such a nice colour. It's because I make everything rusty, I like to ruin all my minis. But anyway, we got this uh, Scrag, so same thing, we just... Uh, well, maybe that just needs to be a little bit thinner. It's quite a jump. So I'm just going to add a touch of, uh, touch of water to that scrag. Yeah, you want to keep them nice and thin here. And uh, same thing, just starting to starting to accentuate all of these raised areas with the scrag. Keeping keeping our lines as random as we can. You know, 
couple of dashes here, a couple, couple of edges there, and just kind of start bringing everything up. And, you know, like when we do any kind of layer, still considering where the light is, it's not always just edges, wherever the edge may be. You know, certain certain edges are going to catch the light a lot more. So especially these ones that jut right out from the edge of the boot, they're going to be quite quite bright because not only are they poking out and will catch catch more uh, friction and get more worn, um, they're also going to catch more light. So work your way around and stipple and scratch in this scrag to all of your edges and you know particularly places like the the very tip of his boot. Gotrek is probably the type of person who kicks a lot, so that's going to get nice and worn. Sorry, bring it down there. So yeah, go around and add in that scrag. And if you're not exactly sure what I mean by stippling, all it means is taking a tiny little bit on the end of your brush and you're just, you're just literally making a, a little collection of dots that build up towards the highlight. And that's kind of how, you know, that technique works so well is because it's so simple. You're just building up concentration of dots. But it looks so textured and it's so easy to do, it just takes patience. So that's all I'm doing here is I'm just building up little dots but I'm mixing up the dots with scratches here and there to kind of make it look a little bit more lived in and that's what we're aiming for okay so we've gone around and added that layer of the scrag brown and that's starting to look really cool you know we can start to see a bit of depth in our brown but at the moment it's looking very orange it's not looking exactly the leather that you picture when you think of worn leather so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring it down with a really pale earthy tone and the perfect thing for that is Bane Blade Brown. I think if you've got Carrick Stone that also works pretty well but I've got Bane Blade Brown and that's what I'm going to use. So taking the same same idea here, thin, thin it down quite a bit. Not like glaze, glaze level, sorry hiccup. Not glaze level but you know we're looking at, <laughs> it's like impossible to show. Um, you know something something easy to work with. Anyway take the tiniest little bit on the end of your brush, take off any excess it's the same thing, just tiny little, tiny little uh, scuffs and scratches with this bane blade, and uh, that's gonna make it look a little bit more leathery and a little, a little bit less like ginger. <laughs> so you know, especially places like the very tip of his boot here, it's gonna catch a lot of wear. Like I was saying, the raised surface of his boot might not be as worn, but it's gonna be catching a bit of light. So, you know, looking at looking at all of those sort of areas those really raised surfaces and this is this is looking like you know you've peeled back the leather to its kind of like vellum not quite but you know like the the kind of under under layer of the leather not the tanned surface that kind of more fleshy rough surface underneath the leather so yeah this is our last step so Go around and add this wear and you know wear it out as much as you see fit and uh, we'll come back for the finished result and there we have it there is our finished leather let me how close can we get there we go so you can see how we've really kind of beaten up that leather around certain edges and kind of given it a bit of life and it's a great way of breaking up the texture of those pants um, you know, we don't want everything to be smooth, but then again, we also don't want everything to be, uh, you know, textured and look like it's <laughs> been dragged behind a car for a couple of days. So, you know, we've got a little bit of life in that leather, and I think it contrasts nicely to the kind of the cooler, the cooler blues and definitely that uh, really exaggerated skin. I think it's coming together quite nicely. Um, let me know in the comments what you want to see done next. Uh, it might be time for the beard. Um, it might be time for the axe. We've got some big, big doozies to come up, um, to come up in this series. Some really cool bits to work on. Um, you know, there's a bit of gold going on as well on that front of the belt. Um, I think it'll be gold. We got some old rusty steel on the base here. Maybe we'll do the base as one, one video in itself. Um, but let me know in the comments what you want to see next anyway. Um, I hope you like it. I hope that you can find a use for this kind of worn leather. I feel like every mini's got leather on it at some point, especially in fantasy. So there's always going to be a time when you can wear out some leather. And if you like my content, please like and subscribe. Share it around all your mates uh, who, you know, really want to beat up their leather a little bit. Uh, everybody likes a good worn boot, right? So thanks for tuning in and I will see you again next time. Thanks.